Hallelujah. Praise hallelujah, the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 We want to give God thanks for this great opportunity that he has afforded us that we can come into his house Amen. another Tuesday evening to celebrate him, to talk about his goodness and to talk about his grace. Indeed, he's an awesome God. And in the old church, we used to sing that song, Every Time I Get a Chance to Praise Him. I will praise him. That's what we used to sing in the old church. Every time I get that chance to praise him, I will praise the Lord. And I thank him for the great privilege that he gave me on this evening that I can come to magnify and adore his wonderful name. Hallelujah. There's nobody like our God. And I thank him for this great privilege even on this evening. So let's just give him praise. He deserved to be glorified. There is nobody like him. Hallelujah. God bless my father's children. Amen. I want to greet everyone in the most powerful and precious name of Jesus Christ. The name that is above every other name. The writer said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And tonight, brothers and sisters, I hasten to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I wish that there's somebody out there tonight that will shout, Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, he is Lord. And I thank him for his greatness and for all that he has done for us. Amen. I want to draw your attention tonight just before I make any other opening statement to the book of Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew 17. We'll read from verse 14 through to verse 21. Matthew chapter 17. From verse 14 through to 21. Found this, amen. Matthew 17, verse 14 through to 21. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a man kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples that they could, to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Verse 17. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, he shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place. And it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Stop at verse 21. Here be it, how be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Father, we give you thanks for today, this moment that you have made, and you have allowed us to come into your house. I stand before you, Jesus, guilty of every sin, but you are the forgiver of sins. I pray, God, that you will forgive me. Lord, 
as I avail myself to be used this evening, I pray that you will speak to me through me to us. We need a word from you, God. I pray, God Almighty, that your, your word will go forth with clarity and with power. We pray that those that are coming, Lord, will hasten to be here. And those, God Almighty, who had planned to join online will do so even now. And I pray, God Almighty, whether we're in this building or we are participating online, that you will show up and you will do a great work. Amen, we will never cease to thank you, God, because we know that you are Lord. Amen. Beside you, there is none other. And we know that you do great exploit. Have thine own way, we pray. As we honor you and tell you thanks. As your word has been multiplied and anointed, I pray that somebody's heart will be saturated as you receive the glory tonight. In Jesus' name. And the people of God say amen. amen. God bless my father's children. You may be seated here in the sanctuary. And if you are joining us online, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to salute everyone again in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Thank God for this privilege that he has afforded us, that we in the land of the living, and that we can be here or even online to share the word of God together. Last week, Thursday, the Lord spoke to me on last week, and he shared with me that I really need to remind us as a church about certain things that we have taken for granted. Well, did it, sir, we have taken our Christianity, our, our life for granted. We have become comfortable, I believe, in our everyday waking up and the everyday provision. We provisions we have taken for granted because our houses are not broken into. We are not being robbed. We are not being attacked to be raped or to be molested. And oftentimes we take life for granted. Not knowing that there is somebody somewhere that do not have the privilege as we are. We have taken our spiritual life for granted because many of us no longer have a prior life. Many of us don't really have a worship life. What we do have is a coming to church when we can. But we really don't have sweet fellowship or union with the Lord. And the Lord began to talk to me and he said, I need you to remind the people that there are some things that we no longer pay attention to that we really should. Amen. And so last week, Thursday, I came to church and one of the things, what we spoke about last week was growing in God, growing in God and in our faith Amen. through prayer and fasting. And he, the Lord needed me to be back this evening on Tuesday where we could share more on that subject. And Elder Brown, during last week and even to this morning, I've been wrestling in my spirit, looking at what's happening in our country, the things that are happening around us. And I remember what Ezekiel said, even as I stand here. Because in the book of Ezekiel, the Bible spoke about a watchman. And the text teaches us that if the watchman is not watching, and if the city is overthrown, then the blood is on the watchman's shoulder. And I see the church as the watchman for the city. Preacher, what do you call the city? I see the city make reference to our country. The city make reference to our homes. The city make reference to our churches. The city make reference to our workplaces. The city make reference to the schools. The city, ladies and gentlemen, make reference wherever you and I will be. And the Bible says 
If the watchman is not watching, the city is overthrown is in trouble. He also said, if the watchman observed that there is going to be a calamity and he doesn't warn if the city is overthrown, the blood is on his hands. The Brown, we woke up this morning for many we thought it would have been another day in the office. Lo and behold, it might have been last night or early this morning, a family of five were murdered. When you look, the news media says, brutal massacre. Brutal massacre. A mother and four children were murdered. Elder Brown, it messes me up because when I got the news link and I looked at the age of those who died, an 11 month old child. The eldest is 15. But four children were killed. And their mother and wondered what could have gone wrong why that could have happened and elder brown while we pondered what might have gone wrong i need to pose this question are we watching as watchmen are we watching as watchmen and now i asked the question sister chelsea and many persons who heard me, even in the Christian faith, would have hurled attack and would have criticized the question that I ask. Because they might be saying, sir, you don't know what she did or what happened. And that's true. I do not know. But I'll ask the question, does it warrant such a massacre? And if we could have done something about it, are we in place as a people of God so as we can prevent some things from happening. I was thinking, Elder Brown, and I wondered why it is that God shows up in the book of Genesis and overruns Sodom and Gomorrah. Every time we looked at the text, Sister Chelsea, we would have said it's because there were too many Sodomites. But when I looked at the question, that Abraham asked those who came with the message. The question was, if you find 50, will you save the city? Yeah. Sister Chelsea, 50 could not be found. Even as they bargained to 10, 10 could not be found. And because 10 could not be found, Elder Brown, the city was burned to the ground. Might I then pose this question that I make those who are hearing me uneasy. Could it be that the city was, was, this, was burned to the ground because God could not find enough who could have kept the city alive? I want to pose that that might be the troubling question that we need to ask and seek to find if that's really the question and what is really the answer. Because it appears to me, if God could find enough, Amen. then he would not have overthrown that city. Amen. Elder Brown, this afternoon when I checked my phone, I saw something that the observer sent. Man was caught with missing 13-year-old girl oh, at the SOC checkpoint. He is now charged with rape. Did you hear what I just said? Amen. A man was charged, a man was found with a missing 13 year old girl. Oh, yes. State of emergency, one of those checked. He was found. What are we dealing with as a church? Isn't it? Appalling that at the point where we are with so many churches per square mile in our country, Elder Brown, we have these kind of things happening. 
could it be that something has gone wrong? I'm not sure if you will answer the question tonight. But I truly believe, ladies and gentlemen, that something has been missing. I do believe that something needs to be sorted out. And so, brothers and sisters, I want to encourage us tonight as we delve into the book, into the word of God. Because I think one of the things that are missing in our churches is that we have no longer been doing the thing that we really should be doing. And that as a result of that, brothers and sisters, we are in trouble. And so, as we looked last week, Thursday, and we ponder on the subject of growing in faith through fasting and prayer, I want us this evening to look at that particular story. So, let us hear what's happening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. So, let's Let's look at it. Now, growing in faith through fasting and prayer. And let us see how we can link this to what it is that is happening in our country. Now, what is fasting? For those who were not with us on Thursday, I will hasten to give a definition for fasting. Fasting is essentially giving up food or something for a period of time in order to focus. We give up food. Fasting is giving up food for a period of time. And in most cases, it is done as people try to refocus themselves. Now, there are benefits of fasting and I will hasten to just make mention of some benefits as I set the stage before we speak even about the spiritual aspect of fasting. There are some tangible benefits that when I look at fasting you get when it is that you put the food away for a period of time there are some tangible benefits. It is said, Elder Brown, tangible benefits you may experience when you are on fast for a certain period of time. What it does, fasting helps to detox the body. Fasting helps to detox the body. And it is also mentioned that it allows persons to have clarity of thoughts, clarity of mind. When it is that you start fasting, you will go through a period of weakness, but then that weakness will subside. It also said that one usually experiences a surge in strength and even a feeling of happiness. It also said that when you begin to fast, you may experience sometimes dizziness and headache. Some people will experience constipation. It is said that you will also notice that you may also feel some unpleasantness and the mouth Sometimes you not have proper taste. Amen. You'll be nauseated. You'll be weak. But it is said that it is a natural reaction to the fasting process. Amen. Because what happened, Elder Brown, is said that your body is getting rid of toxins. Amen. So fasting then cleanses your body. 
and it also allow one digestive system to rest. Elder, fasting has been used in therapeutic. It is said therapeutically since the 5th century. The Greek physicians recommend abstinence from food or drink for patients who exhibit certain symptoms of illnesses. So what you are finding, Sister Chelsea, is that the doctors also use fasting as a means of cure to certain illnesses. Amen. It is also said that what the doctor does, because there are certain illnesses that people might have, and they will lose their appetite for food. Amen. It is said that the doctor recommends that they will that they should not be given anything to eat because it could be detrimental to the patient's health. Sir, why do you bring this up? Because I want us to know that fasting, because as a Christian, if I talk about fasting, I do not share benefits of fasting in other sense. People might think that I just want to spiritualize everything. But I want us to know that fasting is important. Fasting is essential. Now, from a Christian perspective, from a Christian perspective, fasting is also essential when we give up food. Amen. We give up food, brothers and sisters, for a period of time in order that we can refocus our thoughts on God. While we fast, as Christians, we also read our Bibles, Amen. we pray, we worship. Now, I want to say this real quick, Sister Marcia, because not only does Christian fast, but Elder, I found out that all faith observe fast. The Muslim observe fast. The Jews fast. The Buddhists fast. Amen. So you realize that almost all faith fast. So then Christians also fast. Now, most of us do not know anything about Buddhism. We do not, many of us don't know things about Muslim. Many Christians don't know anything about the Jews. But we know that from a Christian perspective, our Bible teaches us about fasting. Amen. And we have come to recognize that a part of our faith, fasting is a part of the Christian faith. Amen. Now, somebody asked the question, Elder Brown, do you have to fast for a specific reason or for a specific thing? And my answer is no. Sir, why your answer is no? Because fasting is a part of Christian belief and practice. We don't, ladies and gentlemen, have to be fasting for something specific in order to fast. Can I tell you why, Chelsea? Fasting is supposed to be a daily habit or practice of the Christian faith. It ought to be a part of our faith, a part of our lifestyle. There will be seasons when we will fast for specific reasons. Now, Elder, when I say this, I will suggest to you that there are people of the Christian faith who will criticize what I just say. Because they believe you have to fast for a specific reason. So then if that's the case, fasting will only be done for special events. But fasting is not for special events. Fasting is a part of the faith and what we do. So we live a life of fast, 
16 of prayer and of worship. That is why we found that in the Christian faith, we choose a day to fast. Amen. Ebenezer Tabernacle, Old Harbor, fast on Thursday. Amen. Kingston, fast on Wednesday. There are other churches fast on Monday. There are other fast on Tuesday. But however it is, a day in the week has been selected for fasting. Why? Can I say it one more time? Because it is the belief of the faith. It's the part of the faith. It is what the faith is to practice. Yes, I repeat, there might be seasons when we go into fasting for special things. However, fasting is and should be a part of what we do as a faith. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now, we found out, brothers and sisters, that when it is, we would have taken the time to fast and to pray. We have no, let God know that, listen, Lord, this time is for you. Amen. And when it is that we make the sacrifice to fast, and if we do it on a weekly basis, what we do is that we are trying or trying to develop a meaningful relationship with God or even and maintaining our relationship with God. Now, I do know, as I said before, that there are other persons who would have criticized how it is that I presented it because we believe other people and in the Christian faith, we must fast for something. So then if there's nothing special, why do we fast? But let me tell you one more time. We fast because it is a part of the faith. And it brings us closer to God. We also mentioned earlier the benefits of fast, what it does to the physical man. So fasting is important. Elder Brown in Isaiah chapter 58, from verse 6 to 14, we looked at it last Thursday, but I'll just bring a few things out of the text. One of the things that we have observed, sir, is that God, through the prophet Isaiah, spoke to Israel concerning fasting. When we read the earlier portions from verse 1 through to 5, we realized that the people were fasting, but they were doing it the wrong way. Yes. And God says, no, I, 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 I'm not a part of that kind of a fast. But then, because of time, I'll hasten to verse 6 to 14. The Lord now says, when you're fasting for right reasons, I'll tell you what fasting can do. He said, if you fast, when you do, and if you do it the right way, I'm just giving you the short version. Fasting in Isaiah 58, verse 6 to 14. Fasting, Sister Chelsea, untie bands of wickedness. God says, if you fast and you pray, let me tell you what fasting will do. It will untie those who are bound by wickedness. What's this? So the accords of yoke, people might be yoked to something, but fasting and prayer has the power to break those yokes. Amen. Fasting, brothers and sisters, can set those who are being oppressed free. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. The Bible tells us that we can go into fasting and prayer and these things happen. No, note carefully. The what says, not only do you pray, but also that you fast. Because when you fast, you are actually saying, God, I am surrendering this time unto you. We have read the text and we saw even David in Psalm 35 and verse 13 mentioned that there were some people who were sick. And he, David, went into fasting and prayer. And God delivers them. So when it is that you fast and you pray, you now take your Christian life or your worship to another level. Somebody said another level. So you take it, you took it now to another level because you're abstaining, you're mortifying the body. The body is telling you, I need food. 
but you're telling the body, no, no, you say, you are not in control. The spirit of God is in control. And God needs to get this time. So watch this. If fasting, ladies and gentlemen, has benefits that it can purify the body. We also know that when we go into fasting and prayer, we take our life to another level. And God says, this is what I require of you. In other words, fasting was not something that the church decided to do because it wanted to do it. But God called the people into fasting and prayer. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? He called the people into fasting and prayer. So when it is that you fast and you pray, you know, take it to another level. Fast and pray, brothers and sisters, in the same text, I suggest to you, Isaiah 58, it set the oppressed free. Fasting also lift heavy burdens. Fasting also break every yoke. Y'all hear what I just said? It's the Bible. When it is that we fast and we pray, these things do happen. He said if you fast and you pray, look what happened. He said the light will break forth through the dawn. And not only that, he said healing will come in the brown. And when I read the text, he said healing will come quickly. I wish I had a church that could hear this. If it is that the people of God will believe what God say and do what God tells us to do, I want to believe that things are going to happen and things will do happen. Fasting also, ladies and gentlemen, when we read Isaiah 58 and verse, verse 8, hear what fasting does. The people will experience and have an opportunity of hearing from God. So in other words, when they are not hearing from God, Elder Brown, because they are preoccupied with eating and enjoying themselves and not giving God time, then they're hearing from God. But when they start fast and pray, they start hearing from God. So fasting and load, fasting and load, they have no know, know when they start fast and pray. Know when they put away food and begin to seek the Lord in fasting and prayer. The Bible says they start hearing from God. Amen. Fasting, brothers and sisters, what it does, it also that the promises of God that God made in guiding his people will be an and they will receive provision they will receive strength now elder brown if it is that god said this will happen i want to suggest to you i will not hold back any longer i'm willing to do what god wants me to do because if if i realize i'm going through a season of oppression a season of struggling and the lord told me in the word that if i set some time for him and seek his face you see we oftentimes read second chronicles 7 14 but what we fail to realize is that God is calling his people unto himself. We found out, ladies and gentlemen, that if we take the time and we fast and we pray. Let me say it one more time. I did mention that we will now take our Christian, our spiritual life to another level. And there is no telling what God will do. We have seen it in scriptures over and over. That when the people of God seek God in this fashion, in the genuineness of fasting and prayer, God shows up. And when he shows up, he answers prayer and miracles happened. Here it is, Elder Brown, because what we, where we are in our country, we have been going through for many years. We have, we have seen criminal, we have seen crime taken a new leap. Jamaica, brother and sister, is ranked as one of the most murderous countries, if I could put it like that. When it is that they have looked at other countries that has guerrilla warfare happening. And when we compare Jamaica and the things that happen here, it's appalling. So let's talk. Let's talk about it. With so many churches per square mile that I mentioned earlier. I need to know if the church is genuine. I need to know if we are genuine what we are doing, Elder Brown. I need to know if we just have the building that we show up in, we sing, we shout whenever time we show up, but we are just doing it as hypocrites. I need to know if we are genuine in seeking the face of God. Because in scripture, when people genuinely seek God, God shows up. Oh, y'all miss it. Let me help you that way. Right. Come on with me. Jonah went to Nineveh 
And Jonah told Nineveh, you are going to be overthrown. And the Bible says what happened is that the government of Nineveh, Elder Brown, what did I just say? The government of Nineveh. The government of Nineveh. Parliament in Nineveh. When the prophet preached, when the prophet declares what was going to happen, the government of Nineveh, Sister Marcia, decided that we are going to go on fasting. I live in a country here, and I've seen every now and then we have what is called prayer breakfast. And all we do at these prayer breakfasts is, is to bring these officials in. And they are, and watch this, and we allow them to sit in the pulpits. We allow them to sit in lofty places in our church. We go through the ceremony, what it is on the agenda. And we pray prayers that we wrote. And we left those assemblies saying that we have sought the, the face of God. But you and I know that those of us who are from the genuine church, we know that's not genuineness. Because we have come to realize that when you're going before God, you go before God humble. You have to go before God confessing your sins. Hallelujah. But these people go before God and they don't confess the sins. They just show up and we allow them to talk and to say things. And they have not really been, what's this, repentful. But we are expecting God to show up. But there's something I observe when I saw what the government of Nineveh did, Elder Brown. Because when the government of Nineveh called a fast, this is what the government said. The government said, I'm decreeing that even though we depend on the livestock, no farmer will feel their animals. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Listen, and the government of Nineveh said, listen, I know that there are some mothers who are still in the maternity ward. And they have just given birth. But if you can hold that breast for a while. And do not allow the babies to even suck breasts. Y'all you, don't like what I just said. I want a change to happen in my country. Now I know some people criticize the preacher again. And them so, so you're extreme. And I don't think it was like that. But the devil is a liar. Because you and I need to understand. That when you please God. God will do miraculous things. What we have found in this season is that we have tied ourselves to be comfortable and we have now start talking about wisdom in the context of satisfying ourselves and to say that God will understand the reason why we did it. But you know what? I stand shoulder to shoulder with a brother I heard on TBC radio it must have been yesterday or this morning. And this is what he was saying. He was saying we need to really go on a fast. And one of the things that we need to do, of course, is that it doesn't matter where you are, even those of us who are dependent on medication, to put the medicine for a while and decided that we're going before God. In other words, if I die, I die. But I will not be taking meds. I'm going to give God this time. You miss where I went. Because it was Esther who told the church, I need us to pray because we are in trouble. And Esther said, I'm going before the king, but we're going to go through a period of fasting. And she said, if I perish, I perish. But when it is that things are out of hand, we have got to recognize, ladies and gentlemen, that as a people, we have to get radical. We can't be talking and we're not doing anything. And we can't be coming to the point where we say, God understands. So if we do, if we allow the baby to eat, and if we allow those who seek to take the medication, God do understand. But we need to understand what God understands is a people who have at the point in their life where they say, listen, God, is either you or nothing else. And one day we can find a body, find a church that we said, God, if it's not you, it's nothing else. In other words, we got so radical and so serious that we decided that's the level to which we are going to take it. And if I die in the process of giving God this time, let me die. But God, you need to have your way. So when we look at this kind of a calamity in our country that we woke up to this morning, 
that a mother and four children were brutally killed. What do we do? Will you give up your food so that we can seek God because we don't want it to be repeated? I don't know if the church is willing to do that because when it is, it is not our house. We don't feel the pain of somebody else because we have gotten so cool as a people that because we are not the one having the experience, then we will not surrender anything for somebody else. But I believe God is calling on a people that we will make sacrifice for somebody else to be delivered. And where we are in this country, ladies and gentlemen, it is needful that we go on a serious fasting empire and seek the Lord. Preachers, we need to give up some stuff so that God can have his way. Brothers and sisters, we need to give up some stuff so that God can have his way. Because it doesn't matter we call on God and we're not surrendering anything. We want God to show up, but we are not going to give up anything. The devil is a liar. And so much so, we have fooled ourselves to believe that the prayer, that, 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 what's this, that our tears can move God without us being genuine in what God desires. I believe God is calling on all of us to repent. Somebody shout out, repent. There is a need, ladies and gentlemen, for repentance. And if anybody's hearing me online and hearing me in this hour, in this building, we need to understand that we have to take this thing to another level because the politicians are playing fool. And there are many of us that have our churches with the steeple and with the cross on the top. We are playing the fool because we are only going through motions. We are just using agendas. We are using a farmer. But God said, you need to come before me. And this is what David did. David, ladies and gentlemen, went into sackcloth and ashes. What is it suggesting? It suggested I'm mourning. It is suggesting that I'm being humble. And in the name of Jesus Christ, because God, we need a change. Somebody need to shout out, we need a change. We need a change. I said we need a change, ladies and gentlemen. It can't go on like this any longer. In the book of Matthew chapter 17, because my time is going. In the book of Matthew chapter 17, Elder Brown, we saw where Jesus was on Mount Tabor. The mount that we call the Mount of Transfiguration. He went up there when he started his ministry. Elder Brown, and whilst he was on that mountain, he was in communion. And the Bible says he was transfigured. What it meant to be transfigured, it says to us, Sister Marcia, that his face changes. There was a different look that came upon him. He was, as they suggest, brightness takes him over. He was in a glory cloud. He, he was captivated by the glory of God. There he was in prayer. Three of his disciples were with him. And as they prayed, as he prayed, the season that Jesus took to be away in prayer, the Bible says, the glory of God came down so much. The representation that worries him. The Bible said Moses and Elias were seen in the realms of the spirit on the mountain. But the Bible tells us something. That after that mountain experience, Jesus and three of his disciples the following day came down from the mountain. From, at the, from the mountain, at the foot of the mountain were nine of Jesus' disciples. And the Bible says that when Jesus and the other three disciples show up, there was a multitude of people. The multitude of people, ladies and gentlemen, were not in worship. But according to the scripture, there was a commotion. There was an excitement. Something was happening and it was not a praise service. Something was happening and it was not worship. What was happening, brothers and sisters, is that they were arguing there was an argument with the crowd and Jesus' disciples. So as Jesus met up the crowd, Jesus asked the question, what is this all about? And the Bible says, a brother stepped from the crowd 
knelt at Jesus' feet and he began to exclaim. The Bible said, ladies and gentlemen, he said to Jesus, I brought my son, Matthew chapter 17 and verse 15. He came and he said, Lord, I need you to have mercy on me. He said, I brought my son who is a lunatic. He, was, he is so vexed. He said, oftentimes, he falleth in fire. And oftentimes, he falleth in the water. I brought him to you to be delivered. But I saw your disciples. But the sad thing, Jesus, they were not able to free him. And the Bible says, Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. Elder, let's see if we can just spend a few minutes to dissect the text. Because the commotion that was happening at the foot of the mountain was as a result of those of us in the church who postulate, who claims to be Christians. But we have no power to do the work that Christians are to do. Because one of the things that we think, because one of the things that we do as Christians is that we come to church every now and then when it is that we do come. And we came and what we do, we come to socialize. Because we are only wearing the cloak of Christianity. But we do not have any power beneath it. Y'all don't like what I just said. So we're only professing to be Christians. But we really do not have a Christian power life. And so what it is. The world is expecting that those of us who claim that we follow Jesus. Has the power of Jesus. So that we can, what is it? So that we can do the Jesus work. But unfortunately... It's not being done. Can I tell you why? Because we are caught up in, uh, in doing other things. We are caught up in this time with social media. We are caught up with friends. We are caught up in paying attention to food that we need to eat. An association that we are trying to maintain. At the expense of not having power to create a change. So the brother said, I brought my son. He said, what's this? He said, my son is a lunatic. Oh, yeah. We suggest he's acting out of his mind. Amen. Then talk to me, Elder Brown. Whoever killed that mother and that four children, is that person operating in the right mind? Oh, my God. He's a lunatic. Oh, yeah. He's so vexed. And he said, oftentimes, what's this? He fell in fire. And other times, he is in water. Suggest to you, ladies and gentlemen, he is out of control. Can I just liken our country to be that brother that's a lunatic? Out of control. Can I liken the murderers to be lunatics? Out of control. Can I liken the rapists to be lunatics? Out of control. Can I liken the molesters? To be like the lunatic, out of control. Can I liken those that are in our governmental system who should stand and lead, but they are not leading the godly way out of control? Lunatics. Can I also say those of us who claim to be pastors, whatever our titles might be, Christian, whatever our positions are, to be lunatics because we are not in our right mind? Because maybe if we were in our right mind, some things would not be happening as they are today. The brother said, my son is a lunatic. He's a lunatic. He's not acting in his right mind. He's not doing what is expected of him. Because what we saw, sometimes we see him. What's this? Melly mixing up with fire and other times the water. So what's this? We also see him that he's doing something that can even cost his very life. Somebody showed out of control. And he said, I brought him to your disciple because I thought that the power that invested in you was also in them.
When you read Matthew chapter 4, you would have realized that is not the first time the lunatic has been brought to Jesus. So maybe this brother would have heard that Jesus have cast out lunatics before. So then if he did it before, he can do it again. So then he brought his son, who is a lunatic, for it to be done. But what says the Bible said Jesus wasn't there, but those who represent him were there. And so the brother believed that if they represent him, if they are Jesus' ambassador, if they link with Jesus, then they should be able to can do this work. Amen. Pastor Brown I also found out that before we got to Matthew 17, Jesus has imparted power in his disciples. They have went out before Elder Brown and they came back saying that Jesus, when demons saw us, they were running. But what happened now, Elder Brown? What happened seems to be what happened in your church because we only have a once upon a time. We can only talk about what we used to do, but we are not able to say we can do it now. Can I tell you why? Because it's not that we're not hanging with Jesus. What's this? We have lost the real connection with him. Because many of us, we are following him, but not in the power of the work that he did. And the Bible said Jesus was so disturbed. That Jesus looked at his disciples. Hear what he says. He said, oh, faithless and how perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? Because I realize that the church has lost its faith. We don't have no faith. We're not acting in the power of God anymore. Can I tell you why? Because we are preoccupied. And the last time I checked the text said, listen, we can't serve two masters at the same time. Either we will be serving one and we forsake the other. In other words, we can't, ladies and gentlemen, be tied to the world and to Christ at the same time. Because we will not be able to serve the two. It has to be one. I wish I had somebody here. Jesus said, you have become faithless. You are faithless. You are perverse. He said, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. This is Jesus operating in disgust. Can I just say something to all of us? I wonder if God is disgusted with the people who claims that they are called by his name. I wonder if he was if I should personify God. I wonder if he is disappointed with what is happening because he has some people on earth who should be standing and declaring in his name. But yet it seems as if they are not doing what needs to be done. And the Bible says they were not able to do it. And Jesus says, bring him to me. Let me do it. He said, you are faithless and you are perverse. He said, what happened to the faith that you used to have? What happened to the times when you used to operate in the spirit and in the power of the anointing of God? What happened to the time the demons trembled at your presence? What happened to the time? when you used to sing and things change when you talk to people and they realize that something is wrong with their life and they have to turn things around but something has happened ladies and gentlemen something has happened because we even though we are still singing and we are still shouting we are doing it from the outside because we have lost that real communion with God on the inside many of us we stumble up into a singing and in a shouting because we have not been spending time to meditate and to think on God. But there's something that Jesus oftentimes does, Sister Marcia. When you read the text, the text told us that Jesus early in the morning, he would have found himself in a solitary place. And what does he do? He went into prayer. He never started the day without getting into prayer. Into a kind of prayer life where he was devoting himself you saw it ladies and gentlemen because he devoted that time in prayer so that when he shows up on a scene he was not just getting started but he had already started I wish I had somebody here he was not getting ready Elder Brown but he came ready why did he come ready because early he started the move real early I want to tell the church I want to tell the body of Christ God is calling us to pay attention to our duties 
We are not here, ladies and gentlemen, so that we can enjoy our time. We need to recognize that when we gave our life to the Lord, we have signed up to be a part of the army of God. We have signed up that we should be a part of a military force, a people that is militant, and their leader is God Almighty. So that whatever comes before us, whatever stands before us, because we are militant, we should be able to deal with it. When it is that they could not have done it, Elder Brown, the Lord said, bring him to me. Oh, yeah. He said, let me handle it. And we saw in the text that Jesus rebuked the spirit oh, yeah. and the demons ran away. Elder Brown, the text tells that later the disciples came to the Lord and said, Lord, help me now. Help me to understand. How is it that we could not do it? Oh, yes. And what's this when I studied the text? I found out Elder Brown that there are some Greek writers who omit the ending portion of Matthew 17 verse 21. Yes. But hear what he says. He said, how be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Oh my gosh. In other words, Elder Brown, there are certain things, there are certain demonic attacks, there are certain levels of darkness, there are certain operations of the wicked world that we will never be able to cancel what they are doing unless, I said it before, I'm going to say it again, we take our spiritual life to another level. He said, this doesn't go out so simple. He said, listen, to deal with this, you need to have a fervent prayer life. To deal with this, he said, what's this? You need to put the plate aside and deny yourself the comfort of this world. But to know that I am on an assignment. This thing doesn't go out but through prayer and fasting. He said, he said there are some you will get out. But there's another level that the enemy takes it. That which is you have to get deep in order to get that thing out. And I want to say to the body of Christ, our oh, thank you, thank you, prayers, mama would have said, it can't move no demons. You and they have got to realize that we have to get into serious repentance. Somebody shout out, serious repentance. Because God is calling his people to repentance. And if you can get this message out, I want you to tell somebody that somebody somewhere saying we need to get down in serious prayer and fasting. Pastor, what do you mean? The pastor do have to call on the church to go into fasting and prayer before the church fast and pray. Fasting and prayer should be a part of the people them life. As Christians, fasting and prayer should be a part of our life. Because even when we should be fasting one day of the week that the church calls for fast, some of us are not fasting. Because we woke up and so we forget that today are fasting day. The devil is a liar. How can you forget that you should be on fast? How can you forget that you should be spending quality time with the Lord? Why you have forgot, ladies and gentlemen? Because our hearts and our mind is not in what we profess. And that's the reason why we can forget it. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm not one of those persons who are decided that I'm just going to be talking. But I am going to walk this. Brothers and sisters, I have come to realize that I can not only fast one day a week. Because what's happening now, ladies and gentlemen, needs more than a one-day fast. Nobody will hear what I'm saying. Before Jesus started his ministry, after he was baptized by John the Baptist, the Bible said he was led into the wilderness. He fasted for 40 days. Brothers and sisters, Daniel fasted for 21 days. Esther called the trip the bread into fast for three days. Because why? Because there was a situation and it has to be conquered. And we realize that one day fast can't do it. 
we have to take it to another level brother than sisters i'm calling on the body of christ wherever you are we have to recognize that god desire serious time this time ladies and gentlemen where we can have these kind of atrocities it's not the first we have had it happening the problem is it's happening too often and ladies and gentlemen before it reaches our children before it reaches us and our door we need to get into some serious passing and prayer this is what the lord told israel through moses when it is he was getting ready to deliver them he said i need a sacrifice i need a sacrifice and god needs a sacrifice elder brown god needs a sacrifice my heart bleeds i'm crying i can't understand it my heart bleeds ladies and gentlemen god needs a sacrifice and if the people of god are hearing me on tonight i want us to know that this is not something that should be a nine day talk but we really need to get serious because we want god to show up we want a move of god in our country we want a move of god in our land in joel chapter 1 and verse 14 this is what happened since we need a change he said i declare a holy fast call a sacred assembly summon the elders and all who lived in the land for the host of the lord your god and cry out unto the lord there has to be a declaration in our country where the real people call a fast brothers and sisters the government don't know how to do it because they are not sanctified they are not holy they are not walking according to the ordinance of the land so the church of the living god need to impress upon the country that we need to spend some time in prayer and fasting we have gone so far because the bible teaches us that before the government would have done anything before the king makes a move he should talk to the prophets but we have found out that the prophets the leaders of our religious faith has been sold out we have been sold out because we want to be sitting on boards with the with with, 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 with men in society and we forgot that God has called us to be separate. That even if I'm going to sit on your board, I'm not like you. And I'm going to speak, thus said the Lord. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 12, hear the text. Even now, declare the Lord, return to me with your heart. Amen. Watch this. With fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. So God said, come back to me now, man. I want the church to come back to me and i think we have gone too far and god wants the church to do what come back i wish that someone because the church needs to come back to the lord we need to come back to god the truth be told ladies and gentlemen those of us that are here in the body of christ you and i know how far we have gone and we need to come back hallelujah i'm closing but elder brown we also saw in Esther 4, 16, I allude to it earlier. And we also saw in Ezra chapter 8, 21 to 23, when it is that the people got the opportunity that they could return to build their territory. But what it is, he said, Ezra said, we are going on the journey back home. We told the king we don't need security from him. So guess what we have to do? Now that we say we don't need your security, we need God to guide us. Amen. So what we need to do, we need to fast and we need to pray so that God gives us safe passage. Amen. That's what the church needs to do. Amen. I close, but Nehemiah, when Nehemiah inquired whilst he was being the cup bearer of the king, he inquired how things were going on since the people got the chance to return home and it was told to Nehemiah that yes we got a temple but he says even though we have a temple he said the walls are in ruin 
Because even though we have a temple, if we don't have no walls, if we have no border, if we don't have anything to keep things from coming in, then it might as well, we all just go to sleep. And the Bible said, Nehemiah was so moved. He was so troubled. You know what brother Nehemiah did? He went into fasting. He went into fasting and prayer, Elder Brown. And at the end of the fasting and prayer, Leah, what happened? At the end of the fasting and the prayer, God allows the heart of the king to be so melted. It was so softened that he releases Nehemiah and everything that he needs so that he could rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Somebody missed what I just said. Fasting and prayer, seeking the Lord will melt even the hard-hearted people. Brothers and sisters, it is time that the body of Christ come back to our Christian faith. Where we return to practice what the church used to practice. Genuinely knowing that God will show up. You can't tell me because I was a part of it, Sister Chelsea, that we used to get results first time. We used to get results because there were some people who were reframed reframe from compromising their faith. They reframed from, from, what's this? From allowing things, our new age things, our new practice to change their belief in God. They reframed from allowing that because some wasn't going to do it, that they would not do it themselves. But we grew up in a church that I heard somebody say, even if it is I alone. Now we have a church that people say, me alone can't do it. The devil is a liar. We need to step out there and do what needs to be done. So it can't be a one day fast, ladies and gentlemen. And it can't be only fast when the church say we need to fast. But every believer everywhere needs to have a prior life and a life of fasting and seeking God in worship. And this is it. We can't be fast, ladies and gentlemen, but we're still connected, doing every other thing, idle jesting, playing around with people. We need to understand if it is God, then it has to be God. If God be for us, ladies and gentlemen, who can be against us? And I close Elder Brown. But my heart, my heart, my heart, my heart, I told the church, and I don't think the church understand, and they might not feel what I'm feeling. But I said, even food don't have no taste to me no more. The best food that I enjoy first time, I can't even enjoy it again. I can't wait for morning to break. I'm on the edge. You know why, brothers and sisters? Because I realize there has to be more that the body of Christ do than we are doing now. There has to be more that the church I'm a part of can do than we are doing now. There are people that God has saved. There are people that God kept giving growing breath in their body and they have no time for God. They have time for everything else and they have pure excuse for the church. But the devil is a liar. And I said even if I'm the only one that's going to be seeking God for what real turn around in the ministry I am going to give up food and I'm going to seek God. But a change has got to come. A difference has got to be made in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And even if I'm the only one that's going to do it I want to be on record for the rest of my life that's what I am going to do I'm not going to seek any company I realize I never born twin and if I got to do it by myself I got to do it but God has got to have his way let God be true and all men be liars but this is the time ladies and gentlemen that we need to realize that God must be glorified and I heard the writer said as for me and my house as for me and my house, what's this? As for me, if you go live in my house, we go do this thing together. I got, as for me and my house, we gonna serve the Lord. Can we come back? Can can the church? Can the body of Christ come back to seeking God the way we used to seek Him? Pray the way we used to pray. I mean, get down real deep and real serious the way we you. How much more of this do we want to see and hear of in our country before we realize there's something that we have to do? Amen. Elder Brown, I'm closing, but I remember I was listening to 
for a message I preached a couple Sundays ago. And at the end, Elder Brown, I said, because the Lord said to me, we need to get back to the evangelism. Open ear service. And if God allows me, very soon, instead we meet here for Bible class, we're going to go out on that street. And even if one will hear, and if none don't want to stop, that's okay. We just need to know we're just going to do what God wants us to do. But we're getting out there, Elder Brown. And we're going to declare the word of God. We're going to say, thus said the Lord. So I mentioned it, but nobody took me up on it. But if I can have a few just to work with me. We're getting out there. And we're going to do what God needs us to do. Because there has to be a voice in this time. What's this? It should never be SOE. It should have been the body of Christ. It should never be police and soldier. They are borderline. I try check. I keep checkpoints because I don't want to catch criminals. It really should be the church out there. Declaring the word of God so criminals get freed. I said, most no, of them can't do certain things. And when the church fail, what we now have? We now have the military and the police. That is what it, it, we do. It's doing SOE. No one at the church due to that. State of emergency. And the church should do that. It's a blood wash. It's a sanctified. It does a force who speak in tongue. It does a force then a gentleman who God has risen up and saved. But guess what? Who is keeping open near service? Police and soldier. I'm calling on us. And even for those who have like faith and those who are part of this ministry. We need to get down into see what's faster than prayer. And I dare you to be comfortable in believing that it don't take all of this. Because listen for it. You're going to hear parliamentarians talking about prayer. But as they say it, they are not willing to repent. Because they are asking for prayer and fasting, but they are still in large. They don't want to give up the brotherhood and society group. Because that's where the money is. That's where the power is. That's where the association is. But if a king can humble himself and remove his royal regal, and go before the king of kings. I hear the king of kings says, I'll answer. And I'll do just that the Lord. May God help us. Elder Brown, I'm going to ask you to close us in prayer. But I really do pray. That as a people. We'll realize. That it can't be business as usual. And I know that we've been saying it, but we're not operating. Because we found out that we, we, what's this? we become comfortable in our houses. Amen. Listen, it was at a house, the mother and the four children. Amen. In the comfort of their house, they were murdered. In the comfort of the... So you think your church people are safe in your house? Oh, you know, I come out of church because it's it, it dark and you know... That's what church people kept talking about. So we feel comfortable in our house. Amen. You are not safe nowhere. Amen. But the Bible told me, and I know I'm going to be criticized for this elder, but I'm going to say it. There was a place that was consecrated for fellowship. There was a city that was called a city of refuge. There were some temples. 
that according to the writings, even if a man commits a crime and he ran there, and if he goes in, it is suggesting that he is repenting. And as long as he gets in and hold on to the horn of the altar, you dare not mess with him. You miss it. You miss it. Because he will be, he, what is he will receive safety Amen. from God. Dear ladies and gentlemen, your homes are no longer safe. Hallelujah. Our only safety is in God Almighty. Hallelujah. And God calls us to a solemn assembly. He called the church to assemble. Amen. So why are we forsaking the assembly? God called the church to assemble. Yes, come together. God, not, what's this? He never even wants us online. We come together. Amen. But we're seeking comfort. But I pray. And I'm fasting. God, I've been fasting almost every day now. I'm praying that God will make some of your life uneasy. Because for what is for what God has invested in you and you know God. As you're seeking the comfort instead of seeking commitment, I pray that you will be so uncomfortable. Amen. And let us see if the church is not going to change. Let us see how stubborn we can be that we will not make changes for God. But I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that there will be some radical people that want to take this on and decide that they're going to do what needs to be done. May heaven bless us and may we come to realize that God is calling us. Because when these things are happening, we need to know that we need to get closer to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we only talk about the murder of the five. And I only highlighted the, this, the issue with the man who was found, was, who, who the 13 year old girl that we missed was found in his presence. But there are other things happening in our country. There are, there are things happening on an on, on a international scene. And we don't even realize the time that we're in. But if God allows me on Thursday, I'll bring to us that we can understand even something that happened in the national scene that's going to affect you, church people, and your house. Food and energy. Food and energy. Food and energy. For, so, for those of us who kept forgetting that we need to fast but we can't find food no worry yourself no worry yourself no worry yourself no worry yourself because the word has gone forth and we are not paying attention to it there's going to be a famine yeah literal food shortage and energy Food and energy. Yeah. Let's see how you're going to live, church folk. Yeah. Let's see how comfortable you're going to be in your homes yeah. when it is that you can't get food. Yeah. But I pray that for those who will take this brother seriously, I'm not the only one that's speaking. There are others who are speaking just like myself. But I got to talk because the corner that I am in, I need to declare it. So all of us has to declare it in the corner where God has assigned us. So God has assigned me here and I got to say it. And we need to know that we are in serious times. Church, we are in serious times. Give up the fashion. Give up stuff so that we can gain God. May heaven bless you. Elder Brown, we do come, sir, and we do pray.
Bless the Lord Jesus. We truly honor God this evening for allowing the man of God to share the word with us. And truth and in fact, we really need to pray and fast and see God's face and his presence so that we will accomplish the work that is needed. You know, I had a dream this morning and it was somewhat disturbing, but I'm giving God thanks that we need to recognize that the church also is being attacked by the enemy. And we need not to be proactive. Sorry, we need to be not reactive, but proactive. You know, we have been reacting, but the reality is we need to do something. It's sad that we might be reacting to what the enemy is doing, but we need to do something. And so the man I've got to share with us now, we pray his strength and his covering. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you again for the opportunity to hear your words to your servant. And your calling and pleading with us to leave from our state of lukewarmness, God. And get to that verb and heat and hotness so that we can bring about the transformation that is needed in our country. Lord, we are reminded by your word that creation groans await for the manifestation of the sons of God. And so it is required that we have faith and believe in you to achieve. But this can't go through, God, without us putting things away and aside. And so our food and watching television and our social media activity has to be put aside, God, for your glory. And so I pray this evening that everyone here in God will make the necessary sacrifice because your servant declare your word that you need a sacrifice. And so, God, I pray this evening that we will be that living sacrifice, God. That we put aside the plates. We put aside, oh God, the meats, the sugars. Put aside so many things. Like Daniel, who didn't have pleasant food because he was seeking your face for the nation. He was seeking your face for the transformation. And so, God, we join with leadership. We join with the man of God to do what's right in this season. I pray for your strength and your coverage and your protection. Father, you see the anxiety, the issues at home, the lunatics on the loose. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak protection, God. But I pray, God, that every man and woman of God, every child of God, recognize what's happening. Put on our sackcloth and the ashes in the spirit and draw us up at your mercy, see God. Rakonda yabasata. For too long, our communities and our country has been under siege by the enemy. But God, in your words, it declares on the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And so that I call forth the violent ones. I declare the men and women of God to be violent in the spirit, God. Shakatama is not we should be running away from demons. The demons and devils should be running away from the people of God. And so God I pray that seriousness in the spirit and heart that we'll do what's necessary as our system will be cleansed. Our thoughts will be in alignment with your word God. 
Shakatanda Yabasaya. Your word said, I hope make it not a shame. God, it said, after we have suffered for a while, God, we know that there are many promises, many blessings, but God, we fail to put this body, our bodies under subjection. But I pray this evening, God, that we will subdue this physical so that we'll experience uh, the spiritual growth and development that is necessary to take your people to the heights and the depths that is needed no god jamaica land is in trouble africa is in trouble god the whole world is in trouble but my people god called by my name should humble themselves the issue is god we fail to humble Ourself, our flesh is so big. We pray to put it down. We pray to subdue it. But tonight I pray that New Ebenezer Tabernacle Apostolic Church, born of St. Catherine, will walk in obedience to your word. We put away stuff, God. Put away the pleasant dishes, God. And we just survive on that which is enough until the change is committed, until the change is seen, until the chain is felt, God Almighty. Hear us this night, God, as we go in power and faith. Help our unbelief, O ye of little faith. Forgive us! For settling for lack of faith. But I pray tonight, God, as our faith expand like the mustard seed, it will grow and enlarge and do great work. Shaki and Shakanda Yabasata. Lord, I speak to the witch. Hands off the man of God. Hands off the house of God. Hands off the people of God. Shakando Rebasanda. Mama Kashiende. I pronounce the judgment of the Holy God upon the wicked. In the name of Jesus. Repent or perish. Rakanda Rebasanda. Say yes to God. Amakashata. Yes to death. I declare repentance in the name of Jesus. To every gunman. To every gunwoman. To every rapist, I declare repentance. But if you fail to take heed, the judgment of God shall and will be in your lives. We give it the glory, the praise, and the honor. As we're about to go to a different home of abortment, I declare your coverage. Cleanse us from the defilement of warfare. Lord, tonight, God, you see the altars in our families that were set up that we were not conscious of, but we are suffering as a result. I pray tonight, God, that those altars be judged in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, nothing from those altars will attach to our lights. We out the work of iniquity, oh God, that was done from our by our poor parents. We announce them in the name of Jesus, and we accept Jesus Christ and His blood that was shed on Calvary. And so, renounce the blood of bullocks, renounce the blood of pigeons, the bugs of pigs, our Kashanda Labasanda. We come against and we renounce every familiar spirit, every spirit of necromancy, every spirit of witchcraft. Only clear the glory and the presence of God the light and the glory of God in our lives shikundu nini katandi yamashi Makatundo koshi katala mama kitoshi. Bandi abakatala basia. Matanda la mashendo. We come against that mother spirit that say, Mother happy rule and mother happy higatanda. We come against every poker and revival and the commands his spirit and we declare the blood of Jesus we say in the name of Jesus victory for the church and the people of the living God Nakashanda, no more chanting Rakatanda no more bloodletting 
those who sit in high seats, Lord God Almighty, they sacrifice, hallelujah, they kill for their Amashanda, the power of Ashanda, the Messiah, and they get away daily and annually. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the church of the living God, I declare a standard belief to know Rakanda Ramasanda, every worker of iniquity, Rakanda Ramasanda, every large man and woman, Rakataya, within the church, expose God Almighty, let the light and the glory of God be upon your people, expose them God. Expose them in our land, God. And let the true men and women of God be seen. And let your glory be experienced in our lives as we submit ourselves to you. Yes, God Almighty, we are tired of it, God. And so we declare your glory, your presence. Makashata Nakienta Nalamahusha Lord God the priests the leaders oh God who go before the Satan and come before your people and they lay hand on your people comfortably. Lord, we are guilty of the iniquity. Lord, we are guilty of the filth, the corruption. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare repentance in the house tonight. Let us accept the gift of repentance. Lord, God, let the church repent tonight. He said, my people who are called by my name shall turn. Humble themselves. Yes, Lord, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. God, you say that we are wicked. And so, if iniquity, Lord God, every wickedness in us, God, we ask and we plead repentance now. We accept your gift of repentance. We turn from our wicked ways, God, and we submit to you now, God. We no longer, hallelujah, dance and shout and play. Then behind the seat we do all wicked stuff. Lord, I pray tonight that we walk in the fear and the reverence of you, God. That we reverence you, Lord God. I will not allow ourselves to be mixed up and caught up in the act of iniquity. Purge us tonight, Lord, as we submit ourselves to you. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. In the holy my prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. You know, we need to leave that low place. Come up higher. The law requires us to go up higher. I can do the best and all my makushaya, man do the best shake it to my maka, long do the best and all my sia, maka tundu kushi, yenda la best and all my moko shanda, mamanda ya baba kashenda la mama kashanda, yay, shaka mama mama. I shall cut asunder. I shall destroy the work of darkness, the work of the iniquity. I shall bring down the iniquity workers. But the people of God need to come up to my level, need to come up to my hallelujah. Come up to the height, come to the depth that is required. Come on, deepness is required. Deep call it and the deep and the noise of the water bro. Come on, people of God. Though that seek me with a whole heart shall find me. Come on. On, there's no doubt. Come on, dismiss the doubt, dismiss the fear. Perfect love casts on all fear. There's no fear in hallelujah, in love. There's no fear in love. I'm not giving the spirit of fear, but the power of love and a sound mind. Come on, children. 